YouTube, what's going on? It's James with Make an Opening and welcome back to a brand new deck tech. In today's deck tech, we have what is pretty much becoming my most played leader at the moment. It's been Grand Inquisitor ever since the game came out and I've been playing around a force table, buying, you know, product, building decks. It's always been GI and then, you know, a little bit of Han as well, but Chirrut is becoming my next best, even if, you know, the next few days go, you know, more cheer it heavy than Grand Inquisitor. He's probably gonna be my most played leader in the game. Uh, he's been picking up a lot of steam, a lot of traction. A lot of people are going in on the um, force um, synergies that you can get in with this deck. Um, people are loving the fact that he isn't defeated if he has um, uh, no remaining HP. You know, at least during the action phase, you can save him a lot by you know uh, equipments, you know upgrades, events, you know, healing abilities on your units stuff like that. It's a very versatile deck, um, very force synergy heavy, and um, very much like a tempo mid-rangey deck, but it has a very big swing turns in it as well. Um, so what we're gonna do today is take a look at my second homebrew deck tech. It's my third deck tech on the channel, but the second one that I've put together myself. Um, hopefully you guys like it. Um, if you do, make sure to subscribe. Only like three or 4% of you guys are subscribed. I know I'm a new channel, but uh, make sure to do that. The way you're not missing any of my newest uploads. Um, you know, hopefully I'm making more deck techs. If you have any recommendations for a leader or a specific color combination that you guys want to see, uh, let me know down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to whip something up for you guys. Um, but yeah, let's get into this Chirrut um, villainy deck and let's see if you guys like it. Maybe it's good. I know it's good. I've been testing it. Maybe you think it's good. Maybe you like it. Uh, maybe I buy it on paper. I probably will buy it on paper. It's so much fun. Uh, but let's get into it. So before we get into the pretty little graphic, here is my deck list page. Uh, I'm calling it blind aggression, you know, Chirrut, you blind. Red is, you know, aggression. Anyway. Um, what we're going to do is just kind of read through what I have here. I'm go through a brief little overview of the deck, then I can get into my pretty little graphic. Also, this is going to be linked down in the comment section below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about the deck and you want to leave it down on SWUDB, um, you, you can use the link to, you know, add a comment. If you want to like the deck, maybe it gets a little bit of traction here on the website, you know, who knows? But um, let's get right into it. So Chirrut has been one of my more favorite leaders to mess around with. Uh, this deck reminds me of an old Magic Gathering deck I used to play where I turned my cards into bullets to destroy my opponent. Just kind of similar to that in a very specific kind of way. So there are 18 leaders in the game currently and their health range is anywhere from four to 10. And I kind of have it broken down here. Um, so IG-88 and Iden are the two weakest leaders in the game with four um, health. Uh, obviously Iden comes in shielded, but they have four health. Chirrut, uh, Sabine have five. Hera, Leia, the Inquisitor, Cassian, and Han all have six. Krennic, Luke, Tarkin, and Boba, and Jen have seven. Vader is the only one with eight. Chewie and Thrawn have nine, and then alone at ten we have Palpatine. Also, with the two recently spoiled leaders, Gideon and, and uh, Mando, they also fall in at six and seven respectively as well. Um, so it's important to understand the health of the person sitting across from me at the table because the main focus of the deck and the main way that I like to play this sort of deck is to completely tilt your opponent by destroying their leader as soon as it comes out. It does take a little bit of setup, so you need at least one of your force units to be in place. So out of your 50 card deck, you have 17 different um, force users. So obviously, um, cheer it whenever he's deployed as force. Guardian of the Wills is a force unit. Uh, we have Yoda, um, we Kanan Jarrus, Obi-Wan, Luke Skywalker and Mace Windu. All of these guys are force units. So you just need to have one of those guys, at least one of them uh, on the on the battlefield, right? Uh, and then you need one resource available with force throw in hand. Um, this deck basically revolves around force throw. Uh, it's one of the key components of the deck. Obviously there's other force synergy cards, but this is the card that makes the deck really fun. Um, and then you have to also have a card with a resource matching the health of your opponent's leader. So say your opponent is playing on the higher side like a Vader, uh, you need to have a redemption in your hand because you know it costs a resource to play. Uh, maybe they have a Inquisitor in hand. Maybe they're playing my deck right across the table from you. Uh, try and have an Obi-Wan Kenobi in hand and keep it in your hand until the turn they flip their leader. What you're gonna do um, is you force throw and then you discard the card in your hand because with force throw you can choose a player that player discards a card from their hand and then you deal damage to a unit equal to the cost of the discarded card so it can tar target leaders it doesn't only target um, non-unit leaders or non-leader units it targets leaders as well you can target yourself so you can discard your own card obviously 
it sets you back a card, but the only time you're ever going to be using force throw on yourself is whenever the leader comes out. Um, theoretically, you'll use the other two either um, on your opponent or just if you need to resource it, you'll resource it. Um, but leaders are meant to incite a huge swing round in these games. Um, but, you know, how does it fare whenever your leader gets insta kill? Not so great. A sideboard includes additional cards that you can use to chill the Chewy, Thrawn, and Palpatine players in your life. Uh, they have 9 and 10 health, respectively. Uh, there is no um, leader cards or um, hero cards that are in the 9, 10 resource uh, category. So in the sideboard, we have uh, three copies of Relentless and three copies of Devastator. Obviously, um, the only way you want to use these cards is you hold one in hand until they play their leader, and then you discard it with Force Throw. Or if you end up having two in your hand before their leader even comes out, you use it as resource food, obviously, because you're never going to play it. Um, it's out of aspect uh, completely, because not only are they villainy cards, but they're also green. So you'd be paying 13 for Relentless and 14 for Devastator. But if you ever find yourself in that situation, then... I've never done it, but <laughs> uh, let's get into the actual graphic of the deck. So here we go, Blind Aggression. Um, here, as you can see, um, well, my, my head's kind of in the way, but the most expensive card in this deck is Luke. We do have a play set of Luke. If you did want to switch out Luke with any other Force units, uh, you definitely can if you wanted to, um, but that's completely up to you. Um, without Luke, the deck comes down to $50, so it is a pretty budget-friendly deck without Luke. Um, but um, the main thing that makes this deck tick is going to be Chirrut Mway. Obviously, whenever he is not a leader, you can give a unit plus O plus two for this phase. I don't see myself using this very often um, in my testing. I didn't use it super, super often. There are some situations where I did because I wanted to get in a trade and have my uh, my my card live. Um, obviously, it is for just the phase only, but you can use it as bait for um, the other the enemy across from you to swing in some additional units at your guy. Um, and then whenever you control five or more resources, so, you know, on turn four, he flips into Chirrut Inway. Um, he is the cheapest force unit um, other than, you know, Guardian of the Wills and Yoda. <clears throat> but he's also very versatile because during the action phase, um, he's not defeated by having no remaining HP, which is super cool. Uh, so if he goes down to zero, negative one, negative two, even, um, he's not going to be defeated until the regroup phase, which gives you plenty of time to actually save his life. Um, so basically what you can do, um, you can use forces with me. You can give it two experience tokens, which, you know, gives it plus two attack, plus two toughness or defense health. Um, so that will allow you to um, buff up cheer it in way and maybe make sure he doesn't die. Uh, during the, up, uh, the regroup and if he doesn't you also can give a shield token to it and then attack with him It's super super good. Um, you can heal three damage from him before going into regroup to save his life um, The whole bunch of stuff to do redemption is pretty huge because imagine, you know, he can get pretty big He is a three five body. So imagine one lightsaber in each hand a Jedi lightsaber Luke Skywalker lightsaber He's running around like uh, so Katano, you know, he has plus six plus four at that point plus six plus four puts him at a nine nine um, So redemption if he has that one HP is say he's even at zero HP, you know getting that much life back off redemption alone is crazy um, Even more cards that can heal him up uh, in the form of Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, If Obi-Wan Kenobi dies you can give two experience tokens to another unit These are permanent plus one plus one buffs unless you know you're going up against upgrade hate um, You can't waylay cheer it. So that's a good thing um, there's so many different cards in here. Um, another synergy we have here is Wing Leader. Um, give two experience tokens to another friendly rebel unit. Uh, guess what? He's a rebel. So, you know, say best case scenario, Chirrut comes out and then, you know, you give him experience tokens, upgrades, you heal him. Like, Chirrut Inway may never leave the field. Um, especially if you're using your cards in the right combination. If your Siri, if your, you know, if your play pattern is right. Um, if your um, series of cards and the way you're progressing through the game, if you're doing them in the right order, uh, you know, if you're keeping them topped up, if you're giving them shields with the forces with me, abusing the additional combat triggers with that as well, uh, and just all in all, how this deck just vibes and flows together. If you're doing it at a really good pace, um, cheer it alone is going to carry you throughout the rest of the game. Um, the base that we went with is Tarkin Town. You don't have to go Tarkin Town. If you're finding yourself dying too quickly, just go for the 30 HP red base. Um, I like this one because Epic Action deal three damage to a damaged non-leader unit. It helps you get through some of those beefier threats um, that you see in you know, the middle to late game. 
And, you know, if you deal four damage to a, um, a Darth Vader commanding the Empire, the 5-7 ambush, uh, Tarkin Town blows it up. Obviously, it takes an action, and it is a little slow. Um, so is it worth the 25 HP base? That I'm not fully sure of yet. I've won plenty of games where Tarkin Town has come into play, and I've won plenty of games where Tarkin Town hasn't come to play. I've also lost plenty of games where if I didn't have 25 HP and I had 30 HP and I could get off another couple actions, then I would have won the game. So the jury is still up on the base. Um, I say if you want to be a boss and you want to have that little bit of extra utility, go for it. Um, but if you like the art style of the 30 HP bases, I don't see a wrong choice there at all. So this is a more tempo mid rangey style of deck um, in this Chirrut blue, white, red deck. Um, a couple of those removal pieces that make it such to where it is more of a tempo mid rangey deck include Tarkin Town, of course, as the base, uh, just because dealing three damage to a damaged unit. Typically, you only use it when you know you're going to secure the kill. So that helps a lot. Uh, Mace Windu with ambush at a taxi unit. Uh, you, as soon as you play him, then if he defeats a unit, you ready him. That's basically removal on a stick right there. Um, we have more removal like force throw, mainly going to be targeted at the opponent's leader. But if you want to target it at other big threats that they may have on the table, or maybe even just, um, just discarding their card to do stuff, you can do that as well. Um, healing three damage and then dealing up to that much damage to another unit, another form of removal. Um, open fires, four damage to a unit, another form of removal. Take down, another form of removal. Forces with me, you action stack, you give two experience tokens. If it's if you control a force unit, you also give it a shield, and then you also attack with that chosen unit. Uh, just so much value that you can get out of the forces with me, it's actually insane. Um, and then a lot of different ways to turn on the force uh, abilities of the forces with me and it binds all things and force throw. Um, hell, even Jedi lightsaber, it has a force um, force matters to subtext here where the defender gets minus two, minus two. Um, and those cards are obviously cheer it. Uh, you have guardian of the wills, which comes out on turn one. And then the first upgrade you play on this unit each round costs one less. So you can go Guardian of the Wills into a one cost Luke Saber or a two cost Jedi Lightsaber on turn two, which is pretty great. Um, we have Yoda who's Force, he has Restore two, and if he dies, um, you basically choose any number of players and they each draw a card. Typically you're only choosing yourself. Um, Yoda and Twin Sons could be kind of funny because you can use it as a politic card and choose who gets to draw cards. If you're feeling fairly friendly on tournament day and you want your opponent to draw a card, if you want to grace him for a card, uh, it'd probably even be it could even be like a sleeper tactic in like a mill deck even as well, where you just never select yourself whenever Yoda dies and just make your opponent draw cards, who knows. Um, Kane and Jars, another force unit is here. Um, you're not running too many other Spectre units. I mean, you're running Sabine Wren and that's it. So this isn't really gonna pop up too, too much. There are some games where I've had it heal me for one or two. Um, but the main reason he's in the deck is he's a very well statted card for uh, five for four. It's pretty good. He's a force unit. Um, and then you discard a card from the defending player's deck. So um, each friendly specter unit counts himself as well. It doesn't say each other friendly specter unit. So you're discarding one or two cards off the top of their deck. Pretty, pretty good. Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is one of my favorite cards in the set. I feel like it's very slept on and underutilized. Um, six for four, six Sentinel is a huge body. Uh, and then whenever he dies, you're giving two experience tokens to a friendly unit. And then if you put it on a force unit, you also get to draw a card. There's so much value built into Obi-Wan Kenobi. His hyperspace art is sick. Uh, I have one personally. It is beautiful. It's fantastic. And Obi-Wan Kenobi does not get enough love. I feel like he needs more love. And obviously the superstar of force units in this deck, the reason why the deck jumps from $50 to $170 is Luke Skywalker, about 40 bucks a piece if you want one. He is a six, seven for seven, perfectly statted force rebel. So he has force synergies and even the rebel synergies in this deck that really only comes with fleet lieutenant and wing leader, but those, those synergies are still there, which is fantastic. Um, restore three. So when you attack, you're healing three from your base, which is very good, especially into those aggro matchups. And then when he's played, you give an enemy unit minus three, minus three for this phase. If one of your friendly units was defeated this phase, you actually give it minus six, minus six. So removal on a stick, very good removal, especially if played correctly. And you know, you sack one of your own guys and be able to do a minus six, minus six. 
that could be huge very slept on well it's not slept on it's 40 dollars, but i feel like the ability doesn't get utilized to its fullest very often um and then one of the biggest synergies with luke skywalker is obviously we're running his own lightsaber um, if you put it on him, you heal all damage from him and you give a shield token to him. So imagine playing into a 9-8 Luke Skywalker Restore 3 with a shield with no damage. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare, I'm telling you. It's great. It's crazy. But yeah, guys, this has been my Blind Aggression Chirrut M-Way, um, you know, aggression deck. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Um, do you think it's a good deck? Are you going to try it? Um, I kind of didn't do the numbers on this uh, graphic, um, just kind of make it look a little bit cleaner. Um, obviously, if you did want the um, specific numbers of everything, um, we have them all right here. Uh, so, you know, kind of gives you a little bit of incentive to click the link down below as well. If you catch my drift, uh, maybe like the deck, leave a comment or whatever. It's completely up to you. Um, I know the sideboard is pretty crazy and I might catch some of you off. Also never really do sideboards. I only did because I needed these in the sideboard at least. And I was like, well, there's already six cards in here. So I might as well make it 10. I have two make and openings um, just for more removal, a little bit of healing for those aggro matchups an additional open fire because there's only two in the main deck. And then an additional takedown because there's only two in the deck, um, main deck as well. So that is what the full deck looks like. Again, let me know down in the comment section what sort of deck you're looking for next, what sort of leader, color combinations, anything like that. Maybe if there's a different type of video style you want me to do, if there's different type of content on SWU that you want me to cover, just let me know. I'd definitely love to try it out for you guys. And until then, this has been James with Make an Opening, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.